I know you've spoken a little bit about the future about the, uh, about, uh, the industry and you mentioned about the role of women, but what are your thoughts on the current states of DNI in the industry? I think you put it very, 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 very clearly that while the policy level uh, we expect uh, equal um, kind of a partnership and a representation, and uh, we have had, uh, for example, the Shipping Corporation of India had a vessel which had the entire crew, starting from the captain to the chief engineer and the rest of the manning, uh, being all women. So as far as the policy and the um, legal framework is concerned, there are no hindrances whatsoever. Rather, there is a, a, a policy prescription that we promote more and more women to be coming at the forefront. We have had uh, examples, as I mentioned, of shipping corporations which are fully manned by women at all the levels. And uh, it is time that the rest of the industry also catches up. Uh, the advantages uh, people have realized. And uh, therefore, uh, as we go forward, I'm sure the kind of things that you tried to flag would become a thing of the past. And we have had, we would have uh, the training institutions take, are taking in women in larger numbers. And as we go forward and the numbers build up, they would find their right place under the sun. So uh, I see a very, very bright kind of a future as far as the maritime sector is concerned for the women. And our young girls are fully prepared for it. And some of the mm, women who have uh, shown the path will become iconic leaders for more youngsters to look at this as a career opportunity. And I would like to welcome all of them and I'm sure it's going to be something which the challenges which the maritime sector throws up, uh, women are fully geared and prepared to, to, to take it on. So I see a, a brighter future ahead. I've been working with the IMO as a consultant uh, on a Bangladesh project for the shipbreaking industry. Currently there's legislation in Bangladesh that prevents women from working in the ship recycling industry and they want to overturn the regulation. And then I delved deeper and I saw that in India, while we don't have such a regulation, we don't have uh, many women working in uh, the ship recycling industry, possibly due to the nature of the job. But I also see that uh, in operational jobs, say there are very few women. Um, in, in Navashiva, the BMCT terminal, when they had launched, they had six female crane operators. But I don't see like the other terminals following suit or uh, there's being so many women in operational roles. What do you think that we can do? I know that the government, uh, there's no discrimination from the government side, but what do you think can be done to change this? I think your uh, facts, uh, what you mentioned, uh, are there. And I think it's need to uh, uh, do some course correction. As was mentioned in terms of uh, supporting women in whatever manner, some industries have taken a lead and I think that needs to be further augmented. Uh, while that happens and we all realize that it makes good business sense to have more women on board for various reasons. Today, the way the technology is changing, things are getting automated end to end the uh, uh, vessels of the earlier vintage uh, may have required uh, someone being in the engine room in conditions which are very, very demanding. Today, the engine room, which is the core of the ship, which I suppose uh, is the uh, most demanding environment which the vessel has, is changing and is getting fully automated. The uh, with the changes that are happening both on the engine side, on the navigation side, on the uh, control side, uh, the women are better placed than men to be able to deliver on some of these things. And the industry is realizing it. And it is their own self-interest. They have to have more women which can do these things better. 
So that change is happening. The industry, because of the changes in the mm, technology that has happened, has to necessarily get more people trained and get them onboarded. So that by itself would help set things right. At some point of time, maybe the mm, challenges were a different kind. That thing has changed. And while the government companies like Shipping Corporation and all have already taken a lead, the private sector, which looks at the bottom line, would also have to start looking at women being a potential class of employees who can do better than men in very many of the opportunities which are now evolving. And for making it happen, they have to have the support systems parallelly being developed so that they are able to harness that talent pool, which so far they have not been able to tap into. So I think that's the kind of message, even uh, a, a conference like that, this should be, be setting out to not just the people who attended, but also the business leaders. That is good for their own businesses to be able to take more women on board, given the new challenges and the environment that is evolving. I think that's the message we got to put in. As far as the policy framework is concerned, as I mentioned, is very much there. We would uh, have a we have a policy which uh, promotes rather than any way mm, creates a roadblock for women to come on board. And uh, while that policy being there, the need is to make sure that uh, the industry looks at it as something which is a win-win for them, and takes uh, and co and corrects the distortion which you mentioned right at the beginning.